Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video and I'm playing with the new Trap Trick support yet again just to gather more results, gather more things in terms of testing wise. I've changed the build around quite a little bit but I'm still tasting, taking uh, suggestions from you guys in the comments down below if there's anything you think that I should change or change the build to focus on. But this, I turned it into a basic card of demise build because I kind of I kind of thought this card would be you know usable with the deck but I didn't really want to commit to it. Uh, with the Retaliating C and the Max C in the main, but Retaliating C can be summoned off of Naturia Sacred Tree. So essentially, as long as you don't draw into the card, as long as you have access to Sacred Tree, it's still essentially a trap. And it allows Naturia Sacred Tree to rotate into a Floodgate. Uh, that is why it's here. Uh, but Retaliating C allows you to search Max C when it's sent to the graveyard off of your Sacred Tree rotating out into another one of your dudes. Uh, so that's, that's a really cool interaction that I wanted to have in the deck because of the fact that you have access into a card that is as powerful as this coming out off of your engine card that you're trying to establish to win the game. But, as you can see, changed the list up to a card of demise uh, list. This still is subject to change. I just felt like card of demise was probably the card that allowed would allow me to access Sacred Tree the most reliably alongside the Pot of Dualities. Hell, I might even cut certain things out and play like a suite of Into the Voids uh, so that I could just try and draw into it even further. Uh, because, like, you really want to get to this card, because this card facilitates all of your playmaking, like, stratagems. With, uh, with being able to rotate out into Mermelios, being able to rotate out into Nepenthes on your opponent's turn. The, the ideal play, right, is to open with Mermelio and Nepenthes. And then you summon the Mermelio, search your trap, set your Sacred Tree, and then your Sacred Tree rotates out into Nepenthes. And then Nepenthes is going to get you a search or a special summon when you activate that trap card that you searched off Mermelio, right? That's the theory. That's the way this is meant to operate. And then your Nepenthes, you know, got value there, and then you're able to rotate out for like a Mermelio to out other back row. You probably searched either Dianea or uh, Coronatus with your uh, with your uh, Nepenthes search, or you could have just special summoned straight out. There's a lot of different things that you have access to as far as, uh, as, far as play lines, little intricacies that make this deck really cool and fun to operate with. But basically, that's basically what I'm trying to do. But again, if you have suggestions for the deck, then leave them down below. This is definitely just something that I just kind of threw together with a little bit of testing and a little bit of theory based off the 2014 lists that I played playing Trap Tricks with Naturias with Sacred Trees. But those were a lot more Synchro heavy builds and a lot less Trap heavy builds. So, like, uh, working over into this sort of spectrum is definitely something that I'm not too well versed with. But, Basically, let's not ramble on any further, and let's just jump straight into the game and see what result we can gather from this one, shall we? Okay, so back in this again with the revised deck list that should have been shown at the beginning of this video. I could have made a mistake. Uh, but winning rock, paper, scissors here is going to be super important. And sadly, we aren't messing with that. But I've got Card of Demise, I've got Rageki, which is great for going second. Absolutely. Alright, so I've got the Retaliating C, so if this is able to be summoned on his turn, then that's going to be super premium for me, but it's not looking like that's going to be the case because he's setting three and hopefully just passing. Well, okay then. Well, I have the Max C in hand now too, so now this is ridiculous. This card of Demise is gonna be pretty, like, lackluster for a while. For a, for a good period of time, it's just not gonna be doing much. Uh, but so we'll take the Bottomless. The Bottomless is just the easiest thing to take in a vacuum situation uh, for uh, not knowing what I'm playing against. He set three, so I'm just like, I have no information on what you're playing, mate. So we're just gonna, we're gonna mess with this in whatever way possible. Uh, but so we'll set this, we will set bottomless, we will set the barrier, and we will set the card of demise. I could activate the card of demise, but I'm gonna lose these two cards. I'd kind of like to keep that max C. Uh, now, based off whether or not he has something like Twin Twister, he's got a 50/50 shot at hitting good cards. Uh, but if he doesn't, then I mean, shit. Uh, now, what is he playing, though? The thing is, I don't know what he's playing. If he's just setting another card and passing, like, what, what's going on here? Twin Twister. All right. Twin Twister discarding Red Resonator, targeting Rageki and Bottomless. Uh, sure. I'm okay with that. Uh, Allure of Darkness now. <laughs> oh, oh, he got into a Dark Monster. All right. It's Plague Spreader. And then a Rota. All right, we're gaining more and more information here on the fly. I like that. Uh, so... What are you going to Rota for? Armageddon Knight? Is this just Dark Synchro? Is this Dark Synchro with Resonators or something like that? Is that what it is? I think that's what it is. I might have to ask him what the name of this shit is when uh, when I get off this and go into Discord. So that's a Mali. So yeah, this is probably just like Dark Synchro. Um, or some variant thereof of the deck. Uh, but so Max C here seems pretty fine, pretty alright. 
Uh, this malicious comes here. I'm drawing into good settables, which means next turn I can normal summon Retaliating C, kill his malicious, while macro is up because of the Retaliating C, and then I can uh, flip my um, my card of demise. So that would be pretty all right. In fact, that's that's pretty good. So we'll just do that. I'm, it kind of sucks that I drew those in conjunction with Card of Demise, uh, and I drew them together, no less. But, I mean, hey. It's whatever, man. Uh, but so, okay, Retaliating C got set, which is unfortunate. Um, I can attack over the Armageddon Knight, or I can attack over the Malicious. Uh, I feel like attacking over the Malicious is just the better route to take, especially considering that I have Dimensional Barrier. Um, this, this removes uh, another Malicious out of his deck. Um, ooh. Uh, well, we're just gonna do this now, calling Fusion. Okay, so he's playing Synchro Heroes. Okay, now it makes more sense. Um, but, so I can't get a replay on that because it was after Attack Declaration, apparently. Either that or Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro is bugged. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro might be bugged, because I'm pretty sure I should have gotten a replay there, because that was not flipped in damage calculation. Um, or that the start of damage step or anything like that. So I'm actually kind of curious. Uh, as to why that's doing that, but we'll card of demise here. I drew into two monsters. Well, that sucks. Uh, but we'll set this, and then we'll duality uh, and try to get another good settable, like solemn strike or dimensional barrier. Dimensional barrier seems pretty fucking strong. Um, so we'll take that. <laughs> I'm gonna lose this Mermelio, but I've got Call of the Haunted, which is fine. So that means I can bring it back. This is going to come back of its own accord anyway. Uh, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, losing those two is definitely fine because I'll be able to dimensional barrier to get myself another turn. I'll be able to call the haunted. The uh, what is this? Celestial? Is this uh? What is it? Which one is this one? Hmm. This is an interesting one. I've never actually seen this one before. <laughs> well, all right then. Uh, you can target one face of spell trap your opponent controls destroy it, and if you do, it will five hundred damage to your opponent. While you have no cards in your hand except to turn this card into the grave, you can banish this card. And one Destiny Hero Monster from the Graveyard, draw two cards. Okay, so if you have no cards in hand, it's Destiny Draw from the Graveyard. That's pretty fucking cool, actually. It can't be done this turn, though, sadly. Uh, or else it would be really, really fucking neat. Um, but he's gonna do this, attack into this. He's attack Did he attack into that with the Armageddon Knight? <laughs> he did. Z, 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 Z. <laughs> Look at you. Um... Wait, this thing, uh, this thing will allow me to add a, uh, a copy of the uh, Coronatus, which is super cool. That's actually an interaction that I forgot to mention in any of the deck portions of the video. Uh, this searches Coronatus. Um, but so we'll call the Haunted here. We'll call the Haunted for the uh, Mermilio. The Mermilio will trigger popping this. So I'm just, I'm outbustering him right now. That's, that's what's happening. That's a bottomless. These are unaffected by that. <laughs> All right. Well, so we've got access to the Coronatus. Uh, this thing is searchable off Retaliating C. I completely forgot that was an interaction. Its attack just happens to be low enough. That's the fucking nut. Um, that is exactly what that is. That is that is the nut high. Uh, but so what I've got access to now is I can Trishula him uh, very easily and very effectively. Uh, so we'll do that. We'll mill bulb. That's a card of the mize. Kind of would have wanted that, but at the same time, I don't really care. I've got Dianea, which means I can make a uh, Emerald play later. I'm just going to do this Trishula play. Which one is attached to the call? It's this one. So we'll get rid of it. And we'll get rid of the Coronatus. Uh, so we'll Trish here. And, uh, and that will be pretty alright. Uh, banish the card from field? Yes. I would love to. I'm going to banish this. I'm going to banish Celestial. You, you bitch, you thought. <laughs> you thought I was going to let you draw some cards. <laughs> I'm... I'm, I may not be the best duelist, but I know how to read, and I know what seems good when I read it. Uh, but So this will attack 13, this will attack 16, and now we're just winning purely on card advantage, uh, especially since I've got the Dimensional Barrier, and I've got Lost Wind. Uh, so ultimately, this should be wrapped up unless he like literally draws Bubble Man, uh, and then Bubble Man's into like two really strong cards. Uh, that would be the only thing that I'd be super, super worried about. But this isn't even an out because I'm going to go Dianea from Mermelio and pop this card. Uh, so that's that's not even something that's going to be a huge factor. But Retaliating C, Searching the Searcher. That actually might be worth to bump Retaliating C up to like two or three, 
depending on what the format is when this card comes out, but right now, playing on, like, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro, playing against stuff like Zoo, playing against stuff like Invoked, Retaliating C is super strong against those. So, uh, so might as well at least abuse it, right? See, I wish Coronatus could let you spin a face-up spell or trap, uh, because if it could, then it would, uh, then it would be great, because it would allow you to spin your Call of the Haunteds back to hand and then reset them. That would be the neatest. Uh, if, if we're just being completely honest, that would have been the neatest thing in the world, to be able to spin face-up Call of the Haunteds that you had used, and then reset them. That would have been such a neat interaction. Like, Coronatus could have been so much better than it ended up being. But, that being said, it is still pretty damn good, now that I consider that it's searchable off Nepenthes, and searchable off Retaliating Sea. Uh, those are two things that, again, I did not factor in. Uh, well, I factored in the Nepenthes part. I didn't factor in the fact that Retaliating Sea could search it. That actually just completely slipped my mind uh, to even think about uh, for like the time being. I'm pretty sure that I knew at some point, but it just slipped my mind. Because like looking at it, it's like Retaliating Sea is definitely in my deck list for more than just searching Max C. At least I would hope so. Uh, based off whatever logic I went into building this deck. I don't know. I built this deck at like 2 a.m. previously. Um, like at, at the night before. <laughs> like I built this deck super, super late at night when I was like drunk on lack of sleep. And all that sort of stuff. But that was a pretty weird game. But it's whatever. I got to do what the deck was meant to do. I still haven't resolved Sacred Tree. So I might play this deck more until I do. Like I said before, if you guys have any suggestions for this deck, then leave them in the comments down below. I think Retaliating C might actually be bumped up to more copies. Now, with the knowledge now that I have of it being able to search Coronatus and like actually having that established hard in my mind, uh, then that could definitely change how things are structured as well. Since it also is a Sacred Tree thing. So like you could rotate into it off Sacred Tree, then rotate out of it, search Coronatus. That allows you to have a little bit more pressuring plays. So that's actually something I really enjoy that I've actually just stumbled upon here. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. And let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Be sure to like and subscribe and check out the links in the description to my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to help support me directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. It also gets you access to a monthly raffle giveaway at the end of each month. So definitely check out the details of that over on Patreon itself. At the end of this month, I'm giving away a box of uh, Maximum Crisis once it hits stores. First week of May or so for the people that have supported me throughout the month of April over on Patreon. So if you're interested in that, then definitely go check that out. But if you're looking to buy or sell cards while also indirectly supporting the channel, then be sure to check out Second Chance Gaming's website, which is also linked in the description of this video. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and I'm a big fan of how they do business with what I've dealt with thus far, both shipping and pricing-wise. So definitely check out their site and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But other than that, that is it for this video. Again, thanks for watching, thanks for your time, and as usual, guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video.